It's okay. okay. Okay, ready. Ready, perfect. Well, classes, thank you for joining us. Um, we're gonna get started now. It is five o'clock. Um, five o'clock my time, four o'clock mountain time. And um, we just are excited that you are starting your uh, nursing journey to becoming a professional nurse. And so welcome to the NUR 125 course conference. We ask that if you're not um, asking a question, if you could please just mute your microphone because uh, that way there's less echoes and less background noise. And I know there's uh, quite a few people that have joined. So that's just a little bit of housekeeping there just to please mute yourself. But if you do have a question, we really encourage you to ask your questions. So feel free to ask a question at any time. Um, my name is Ms. Ann Wilkinson, and I am one of the faculty members for the Nursing 125 team. And um, I've been a nurse a long time, since 1983, and I've been teaching full-time since 2000. Um, I've taught both on-ground and online, and for the last uh, two and a half years, I've been teaching full-time online here at Eagle Gate College, and I'm just really excited uh, that you are here and starting your journey. Um, do the other faculty members want to just briefly uh, identify themselves? Sure. Uh, I'm Dr. Sheila Mady, and I am teaching uh, one of your 125 sections. And so I um, obtained my nursing license in nine, 1992 and have been teaching full-time nursing education since 2004. And um, like Ann Wilkinson, I have taught on ground plus online. And um, I've taught 125 um, quite a few times. And um, I've been with Eagle Gate, gosh, I think it's four years, or no, three years now. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, my name is Dr. Rena Jaber. I'm teaching one of your 125 also sections. Uh, I've been teaching online since 2011 and uh, on ground two since 1993. Also online 2011, I started teaching online. I taught 125 before. This is my second year with Eagle Gate College. And I'm so happy to meet you all. I'm Dr. Donna Bore, and I have 45 years in both academia and clinical um, practice. And I am teaching a section of 125, and it's a disease section. And um, I just hope everyone enjoys their classes. And this is the first step towards in the nursing profession for you. So congrats and enjoy. Wonderful, thank you. And so now we have um, Dr. Sharon Argo is our online librarian and she is here to give us a overview of how to use the LIRN library to your advantage, how to narrow searches, and how to get to what you need. So, uh, Dr. Sharon Argrove, take it over. Okay, well, thank you very much. And just um, as an, a little introduction, I've been working at college and university libraries since 2003, um, on ground and online. And before that, I've worked in other kinds of libraries um, from preschool all the way up. So I have a very varied experience as well as many years of experience. Um, and I've been um, with the school now for um, about two years also. So yes, what I'm going to talk to you about is how to use our Learn Library. And you'll notice that right now we've entered into the Canvas site, so you're on the class. And I'm going to walk you through the steps that you need to do in order to find things from the library that will help you with your research. So the first thing, obviously, is to click on the tab here on the left that says Learn Library. It now pops up with a list of all the different subject areas. Now, 
because this is a nursing course, we will concentrate here on the left side where it says health and medical. So what we're going to do is click on that and then brings us to this other list of all different databases and collections and files, all different things. It could be books as in like the first one says Dale eBooks. Now these are not textbooks, these are other kind of reference books that you might find in, you know, in a regular library. And you can do a search and zero in exactly on what it is. And you'll notice that because I'm hovering on it, a little box popped up with an explanation of the kind of stuff you'll find in there. So that helps you figure out what you're looking for. So if you know that you want, um, you know, a dictionary definition of something, maybe you want to go to the Gale eBooks for that. Okay. So as you see, I can click on health and medical collection. And this one tells you it's a comprehensive journal database. So what that means is it has lots and lots of articles from all kinds of health and medical journals that will help you on um, various topics. And the topics here they say are clinical and biomedical, consumer health, health administration, and more. So hovering over these as you're kind of looking around for stuff will help you. Okay, so for example, another one that's very popular is the Gale Health and Wellness, and that's over here at the top. Okay, so you can click on any of these for different things. I'm gonna start out down here at the Nursing and Allied Health Database. And here it says um, it's comprehensive coverage of nursing and allied health, and this has lots of different things. Journal articles, resources, videos, reference books and more. So it's a little bit of everything. It's actually a lot of bit of everything, but I'm gonna click on it so you can see what it looks like. So here's the way you start out. It's very important that when you wanna find something to read, you need to find the full text and that's this area here. You must check the box that says full text because if you don't, what you'll get is the abstract or summary description of an article, but you won't get the actual article. So you want to make sure that you always have that little box check that says full text. Okay. Um, and then you can, if you want, start your search. So if you wanted to look up some articles about the common cold, for example, I'm going to show you an easy way to do this. Whoops, helps to type it right. <laughs> Okay, so you'll notice that I put the words common cold in quotation marks. And the reason I did this is that I want the system to know that I'm looking for those two worlds, words next to each other. Otherwise, it would look up every single article that has the word common in it or the word cold in it. And it might look for something about cold climates. So because we want common cold, we want to have those little quotation marks around it. So let's start our search. And so we go over to the right and click on the little glass that looks like a magnifier. And we're going to now start our search. Okay, now you will notice that there's way too many results, seven, over 7,000. So obviously we need to cut down on this for, to, make, you know, to make it easier for us to find what we're looking for. So first of all, what, what type of source are we looking for? Are we looking for a journal? Are we looking for a book? Do we want videos, dissertations, or magazines? So that will be up to you to decide. So let's go to journals, because most of the time it is journals that you will be looking for. So now it cut it almost in half down to 4,000. The next thing that's important as you scroll down the screen is the publication date, okay? Now, what's important here to see is that it has articles all the way back to 1899. So we want, for the purpose of proper research, we don't want things that old. We want to change that. So we will click on enter a date range and we will go back only as far as five years. So we will put in 2016 through now, 2020. 
And let's see what happens when we update that. So now we're down to, again, it's a large number, but you see how it, it went from 4,000 down to 900. So that's another way to cut down what you're looking for. Now let's say we didn't have a number like uh, 900, but we wanted to start taking a look at some of these articles. So there are a few ways you can do this. Dr. Arka? Yes. This is um, Dr. Mady. Can you uh, click on peer reviewed as well? Absolutely. Thank and you. I will explain what peer reviewed means. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, okay, the, that was the other little box that was next to full text, if you recall. It's not going in the right direction. Let's see here. Oh, whatever. Okay, peer reviewed is a type of a journal that the articles in them have gone through a review process by subject matter experts, and they decide if the material is of the quality and the level of quality that deserves to be in their journal. So they look for the studies and make sure that the studies were done properly and all kinds of things like that. So you will find that once you click on peer reviewed and do a new search, oh, it's still, I'm going to start this over because I don't like the way this, I don't like, I'm going to go back. Something is weird about how it's doing the, the quotation mark is backwards and I don't know why. I don't know if that is making a difference in, I'm going to add something to this. I'm going to do common cold and treatment, okay? We want to know what are some of the treatments for the common cold. So we're checking both the full text box, box and the peer reviewed box and clicking our search. And then again, we have to do the date range and update that. Yeah, it's 700. Um, there are, that's a very common topic, obviously, and there are a lot of things on it. But there are other ways that you can reduce the number of hits. Let's say you want only something on evidence-based healthcare. Now, I don't know if you have gone over what that might mean, but um, it's based on evidence, obviously. So that would be a way to cut down on the total number. We're now at 39 results. Okay, so that means we have 39 journal articles on the topic of common cold and the treatment of common cold, okay, and um, with evidence-based medicine. So that means the reports would obviously have quite a bit of good scholarly information in them. Okay, so I'm going to just pick one. And I can show you, you can click on the actual title of the article or down below it, there are some other options here. You can read the abstract, which is the summary. So if you want to, you can read that first and see if this article fits what you're looking for. Okay, and if it does, then you come back up to the top of the screen and you can download, well, you can do a few things. You can read it in full text on the left side you see here where I hit full text. It now has the entire article for you in an easy to read format, like it would be a Google page or something like that. But if you want to see it like the, it was when it was printed in the journal, you need to click the PDF version. And now you see it looks just like a journal article. Okay, and it'll have the same font, the same, It'll have the page numbers. See here, this one says page 123. In the regular full text version, you don't know what page you're looking at of the original article. So I do suggest to most people that they use the PDF version when they're reading it. Now, once you're in the PDF version, there are a number of things that you can do. You can right over here, you see there are some things here. You can download this article right to your computer if you want to read it later, for example, or you can print it out. Or you can apply a bookmark so you can save it for later. At the top of the screen, they're kind of similar. You can download it onto your computer. 
You can email it to yourself to read later, or you can print it out. And then the other thing I want to point out that's very important is this second button called Cite. And what this is, is that when you are using an article for any kind of assignment or paper or uh, homework or anything that you're using or doing, you need to say where you got your information from. And so this actually helps you. It now pops up with the citation information in the format that we want here at EagleGate. It's called APA style. And as you can see, the, the big box shows the citation. It starts out with the author's last name, comma, first initial, and you see it's like that with all of them, and then the date. And all of this is exactly the way you wanna have it in your last page, which would be your references page when you have a research paper you're doing. So at this point, if you were working on a paper, all you would have to actually do is highlight it, copy it, and paste it on your paper in proper alphabetical order based on the author's last name. I would also like to just highlight that there sometimes are some typographical errors in here because these are put together by humans. So even though this is an easy to copy citation, you have to still become familiar with APA because you might catch a mistake. If they, for example, after the author Etwell comma F, if they did Frank instead of just the F, you'd know that that's a mistake because it's only supposed to have his first initial. Okay, so I just want you to keep your eyes open for things like that. Anyway, this is how you find an article and this is how you cite an article. Is there something in particular faculty that you would like me to highlight? Um, can you go back to the site, uh, please, where you had site? Oh, oh, to site, I'm sorry. Site, yeah, because I just want to point out that, you know, a lot of the citations are not correct. Yeah, and I did. That particular one, the journal was not spelt correctly, and the DOI number for the sixth edition, which we're doing for this class, should begin 10 period, not the HTTP. It should just be DOI colon 10 period, blah, blah, blah. So you can see the journal is, they have small case instead of, you know, the upper case. So you want to be very careful and you want to make sure that you, in this course, in the next few weeks, you'll see more about APA. You know, just take a good look at it. Yeah, as I did mention, there are mistakes in here and they're, they're done by humans. <laughs> um, so they didn't realize that International Journal of Medical Toxology, toxi, yeah, Toxicology, um, that it should be capitalized. It's coming out of drug safety, but that's also a journal that's mentioned in there. So you're right, that needed to be. And I'm glad you, you showed an example of that. I wasn't actually looking for an example, but here we have one. Right. Um, yeah, so that's, I'm glad you noticed that right away. Um, anything else you want me to point out? You want me to look at a different database? You can go to the Journal of Nursing Scholarship because that's a good journal where all the articles are peer-reviewed, they're all scholarly, and that's one of the journals I always tell my students that, you know, if you want to find all scholarly articles and, and if you can find something there, look there first, um, because then you'll have the correct Okay, so article. we don't have the individual journals here. You do, I've been in it. And if you go to publication, go to ProQuest oh, okay. and click on publication. Is it in this nursing and health or is, is it in ProQuest? It doesn't matter, you can go to publication wherever. And okay. if you go to publication, you just put in the publication Journal of Nursing Scholarship and you can pull anything out of there and it's all scholarly. Within five years, of course. Journal of what you said, nursing? Scholarship. Mm -hmm. Journal of Nursing Scholarship. That's a good one to look first and see if you can find something there. All right, so um, it's, let's see here. That's okay, so what's the second one you're talking about? The International, not, yeah, it's the Journal of Nursing Scholarship. That's so, correct. Yeah, it found two things that had those words in it that when I did the search. But and, we're they're both, and they're both scholarly, just right. so you know. But the Journal of Nursing Scholarship is good to start and, off with. The other one's nursing education. You can actually go right into the journal. Yep. And you can search here within this publication. Now, if you know what year you want, you can, do that too. You can open up the year. 
but you may not know what you want yet in terms of And you can it, certainly click on the year and then put in the publication and just kind of browse. And right. Sure. Yeah, you can it's a lot faster doing it that way than to try and find something that might not be scholarly and then get points taken off for it. Well, if you do a search, whether it's a basic or advanced search, and you make sure you check peer reviewed, it will always be scholarly. Sometimes, not always. <laughs> You're finding peer reviewed that are not scholarly? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I can find errors, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and as I said, there are lots of other collections here. Um, as we, here's the ebooks, for example, if you were looking for books just so you can see that it's going to look a little different. Okay, you do a search the same way. You're going to do a basic search and you may want to just start out by clicking medicine first. Okay, there are 93 books that they have available in the topic medicine, not necessarily nursing, but medicine. And you could start there if you want to, or you can type up in the top. Okay. Um, and that's the ebooks. There are also other kinds of files. Now you see some of these have these blue little dots like a little circle, and these are all published by a company called Gale. And you see all the blue ones have the word Gale in front of them. All these red boxes are from a company called ProQuest. So it's a different company, that's all it is. They, there would be some overlap possibly, but not necessarily, they have different um, journals in them, different products in them, etc. So the Gale One file, Nursing and Allied Health, for example, see it looks kind of like the same, but here this topic finder is very helpful. I like to show this to people. Um, faculty, are you familiar with this topic finder? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so what this does is that you can then, again, we, we would put common cold if we wanted to, and do a search, and then what it does is it shows you a box. Ah, what did I do wrong? There we go. Now you see what it's doing. It's showing you all kinds of terms that are connected with your original term of common cold. Um, what if you're interested in the flu or sinusitis or how it affects families? This kind of gives you ideas in directions that you may want to go to before you start doing a, um, a report or any kind of research. Um, something that strikes your interest. So I just bring this up as a nice little tool to help you think about branching out and to other topics that are related to your original one. And that's in this one called the Gale One File Nursing and Allied Health. Um, other than that, there's PubMed. PubMed is a database from the National Library of Medicine. It is, as it says there, 30 million citations. These are not articles, these are just the citations, just the, the listings. If you want um, to see the actual articles, then you have to do some further research. And I'd be happy to come back another time if you wanted to go into PubMed you know, as a subject for another talk. But you can do searching the same way with PubMed and find articles. But then um, they may or may not necessarily be full text. And in most cases, they're not. So I don't recommend starting with PubMed in the beginning of your searching. Anything else you'd like me to point out? I think that, that is, that's a perfect um, amount for our students to get started with. I, I think that's, that's a great presentation. Um, did the students have any questions? And, um, we're going to point out later uh, where you can get a hold of Dr. Argov if you would need have a question about about searching the library. Her her information is on every um, it's in the pages tab yes. on your library resources, and I'm going to point that out later. But 
Um, so if there would be a question, you could always ask your faculty members or you could um, contact Dr. Argov directly yeah. through her email. Anytime. And I will respond as quickly as I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Argov. We really appreciate you coming. And, and this is a perfect beginning um, setup for our students to get into researching and, and being able to get to what they need and being able to get scholarly articles. So we thank you very much for um, coming. And, um, and if we have questions, we'll, we'll be asking you. Okay, sure, I'm happy to help. So I should, I'll stop um, sharing my screen now. Okay, and then I should start sharing mine, right, Sheila? Yep. Okay, let's see what I got here. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. You're very welcome. And remember, please Thank reach you. out to me with for any kind of questions you might have about doing research. I'm happy to help you out. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. So students, um, we are going to now just do a brief course overview, and I'm just gonna see if. Um, can you see my screen now? Yep. Yes. Perfect. And so we're going to do a, just an overview so that everybody has an idea of where things are and how to get the most out of your courses. And um, every time you enter the online class, the first thing you should do is check the announcements. And this is where, um, as online instructors, this is our, our way of getting a hold of you and letting you know of important things, whether it's about, it might be a tip about a, one of our assignments, maybe it's a question that somebody's asked and we think everyone should know. It's like when you come into your on-ground class, uh, your on-ground faculty in the first minute or two might just say, hey, everyone, this is really important for this week's assignment. And this is our method of doing it. So every single time you come in, check your announcements, realize that there's only going to be five of them here. And um, so if you haven't yet checked your announcements, your faculty member probably has a lot more than five there. So you would wanna click on the announcements tab and then you will see all of them. And I'll just show you that quick in case nobody's seen that. But all the announcements that your faculty member has posted would be right there. So always check that. That's very important. That's how we get a hold of you. That's how we um, give you information that you might need. To get a hold of your uh, instructor, their information will be right here at the top. And I want to point out that our course learning outcomes are right here. And we want you to be sure to read them and read them to you. But these are what the different outcomes that you will be mastering when you do your discussions and when you do your assignments. So it's very important to know what they are and what you're, what you're aiming for. I do want to back up just a bit and talk about our course description because sometimes people think this is nursing fundamentals where you learn about fluid volume balances and you learn about medication administration and very various things like that but our course description is that this course is designed for students to learn strategies and tools that are going to support success in our bachelor's program um, and we're also going to introduce you to um, effective written and technological skills. We're gonna introduce you to anal the analysis of scholarly evidence. And we're going to introduce you to uh, incorporating evidence for practice. And you're gonna see some of the frameworks and uh, theories behind what it takes to be a baccalaureate nurse generalist, and that's your goal. And so this gives you the framework for it, and it sets you up to get your mind thinking so that when you come into nursing fundamentals, you'll realize what evidence-based practice is and how it applies to medication administration and things like that that you'll be learning in that class. 
So I just wanted to point that out to you. Um, we have a textbook. It's the American Psychological Association, the APA manual. Um, and it's the sixth edition. And you all should have received one at your campus orientation for the nursing program. And we are transitioning into the APA seventh edition. So if you have the APA seventh edition, and you are citing and referencing with that, that you will not lose any points for using the seventh edition. But you need to have this um, textbook because A, it's very important in your discussions weekly and your assignments, but we also have an open book quiz for 75 points in week three. So if you have not received that, um, you should contact your uh, program director or your um, campus dean uh, to see where you would receive that. But you should have gotten it at the orientation for the nursing program. Is there any questions on that? Okay. And here are some library resources. You just had the best resource just a few minutes ago. But we also have another, um, we have EBSCO host, and here's a link to that. And we also have the Ovid database. Here are your support numbers. Uh, as you go through our, our program, you'll be um, learning, uh, getting different um, programs, and one is called ATI, and that will be used throughout the program in different courses. We don't have that, but this is their number, so you'll see it in every syllabus. You have problems with Canvas, here is their help number. Um, if you need some technical support from, uh, from Eagle Gate, here is the tech support number here. So those are all there for you. Here are the general course policies, and this is not unique to our course. These are general course policies that are the same for every nursing course. So I, I do want to go over uh, these um, briefly, and I'm going to probably give a little bit more information about some than others, but you are held responsible for this, so we do want to point them out to you. And of course, ethical behavior, um, nurses need to maintain a high level of professionalism and high ethical standards as defined by the American Nurses Association. And so um, we hold you to these standards. And so you need to um, be aware of it. We, you know that cheating or dishonest behavior in any form is, is not tolerated um, and can be grounds for disciplinary action up to and including dismissal from the program. And so it, and it describes more what cheating is. There'll be um, information on this in your student handbook also. I wanna point out plagiarism and self-plagiarism. And I want to let you know that we do have a lesson on this in week three, so you will learn more about plagiarism, exactly what it is and what self-plagiarism is. So, this is a concept that you'll learn very well so that you don't accidentally plagiarize. Um, we also have a rule called the 80-20 rule that states that at least at the very minimum, we would like more, but at the very minimum, 80% of your work should be in your own words. Direct quotes um, should be kept to a minimum. We want you to read about something, but then be able to um, put it into your own words. And we want you to not be using direct quotes. So you would talk about something and cite it and reference it, but then you would add your own thoughts to it. So at least 80% of your work should be in your own words. Um, so that is also found in your student handbook. Professionalism um, is another uh, concept that we um, are very proud of our profession. Nurses year after year are found to be the most trustworthy profession in the Gallup polls. And so as a student nurse, 
you're expected to also represent the prof profession of nursing and you also represent our college. So wherever you are, um, we expect that um, professionalism, you will be um, representing your chosen profession very well. And you can read uh, the rest of this on your own about a few details about what professionalism includes. And now I wanna just concentrate here a little bit more on late work because this is very important for you so that you are aware of the different um, penalties for being late so that you're not caught off guard. And these also are in the student handbook, but late work, um, sh should you be late, the assignments are all due, um, on Sunday evenings at 11.59 p.m. So if you are late for an assignment, it's a paper or a PowerPoint presentation or something of that nature, 10% of the total points possible are deducted per day um, for each day that it's late. But this will only be deducted for three days for a total of 30 percent uh, for being late but if you go the fourth day it just automatically goes to a zero so you can only be late three days for each day it's late it's 10 percent of the total points will be deducted um, so you want to be sure to get your give yourself enough time to get your work in late because um, a day starts at midnight on the date specified and ends at 11.59 p.m. Anything turned in after that is counted at 12 a.m., which starts the next school day. And the grade books will light up red and it'll say late. Um, and so the penalty would then be applied. So you give yourself plenty of time to get it done and enough time to get it submitted because sometimes you're trying to upload it and it might take a longer than you think it does and the clock will click over. So you wanna be sure to just give yourself time for that. And then another thing to note here is that um, when you submit an assignment, it's your responsibility that it's in the right format and it's submitted to the correct location or you will be given the grade of a zero because when you go and you give yourself enough time to get it in, get it in on time, you upload it, go back in and look at it and make sure that it's not a blank document because sometimes that happens because somebody saved it in their cloud or in their OneNote or on their computer file and they just grabbed the wrong one. And your instructor has, multiple classes and many students and may not find you that until Wednesday. So you need to, you are, it's your assignment, be sure that you double check that it is submitted correctly because you do not want to get a zero. Um, point number one underneath this is there's no extra credit assignments are permitted for any reason. Sometimes um, sometimes people lose points throughout the course and at the end of the course they want to raise their grade and they are asking for extra credit and there's just no extra credit assignments for any reason and that's college-wide. Um, quizzes and exams are not accepted late so don't keep going after the due date because if you do you will get a zero. If you are not quite done with your quiz and you haven't given yourself enough time to get it done by the deadline, just submit what you have and you'll get the partial credit. So quizzes and exams are not accepted late and they result, result in a zero if they're turned in late. Now discussion threads, we have two discussions in each week and discussion thread posts are not accepted for credit after the due date for each graded discussion thread. So keep in mind that if the Sunday comes and it's 11.59 p.m. and you haven't posted, but you posted 12.15 in the morning, Monday morning, um, 
that's like coming to your on-ground class when the whole class has left and gone to a different class or gone home for the day. So you have to have your discussion threads posted by the due date for each graded discussion. Otherwise, they don't count. Anything after that 11.59 p.m. midnight on Sunday does not count. Any questions on late work? Because that's an important thing. Any questions from the students? Hearing none, I'm gonna go on. But if you think of one later, you can always um, email your, your faculty member and we'll be glad to help you out on that. I'm gonna briefly just say attendance uh, and participation. Attendance is posted on Monday and Thursdays. And so twice a week, we look to see if you've been in the class and participating. So this morning we all got on and we, we, we did our attendance. And so for Thursdays, we're always looking backwards. So on Thursday, we look back and see if you were in on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Participation is um, posting on a discussion board, taking a quiz, or turning in an assignment. And then on Monday, we look back and see if you posted on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So that's how that works. And then we expect civility in the classroom. Um, incivility is taken seriously. And I'll just let you read that. And I wanna come down here to the grading scale. And I want to point out to you that in general ed, you needed a minimum of 74% to pass. But in the core nursing program, you need 77% in all nursing courses to, to pass. So it's just a little higher bar um, and you need to have a 77 to pass the course. So what are we doing in this class for the next eight weeks? It's gonna be busy. Um, we have two discussions each in weeks one through seven. So you'll see discussion one and discussion two. So they're worth 25 points each. And then in week eight, we, have, we just have one discussion. So each week you'll be doing two discussions and, and various other things. So the discussion boards are worth a total of 37.5% of your grade. So be sure to be in there and doing your best there because that's a large piece of your grade and, um, and it adds up. So. Um, try not to skip a discussion because uh, those points are, are valuable. In week one, we have several assignments. Um, we have a time management track chart. And so you're gonna chart out a week's worth of what, what you're doing every day so that you can see where you have time to study. We also have what's called Who Knew It assignments. And they're in week one, two, three, and five. And they're worth 50 points each. And they are actually, um, they are videos that you watch and learn from. And I'm just gonna, at this second, jump out and show you them so that you know what I'm talking about. Go to our modules. Now go to our first one, which is right here. And it's on successful time management. And here are all the videos that you need to watch. You can, you can see as I scroll down, there's quite a few. And you'll notice that the first three are green or four, and that's because I've clicked on them and I've listened to them. And so all you need to do is, is listen to these there's no quiz on them, but they have to turn green. And you'll track your progress up here. You can see that this line turns green and says, if I hover over it, I'm only 23% complete. When you have finished every single one of them, a, a score will automatically populate in the grade book. So if you think you're done, go back and look in the grade book and see if you have 50 points. If you don't, that means you've skipped something. 
So then scroll down and see which one you missed, because you can see that I haven't done these yet, because they're still gray. So that is the Who Knew It assignments, and this one's on time management. We have some on plagiarism. We have some on how to do a PowerPoint. Uh, so that's very important for you to do and to check and make sure that your grade has been entered because as soon as you're done, it will. Okay, uh, we have a couple quizzes in the class, not many. In week two is know your syllabus and your resources and it's gonna just check that you've found everything. Uh, we have a quiz on APA format in week three. We have a scholarly resource analysis in week four. It's worth 120 points or 12% of your grade. And we have a PowerPoint on incorporating evidence into practice in week six. And that's uh, 140 points or 14% of your grade. And so it all adds up to 1,000 points or 100%. Any questions yet? Okay, I'm just going to hit the highlights of our grading rubric. And I'm not going to go into it in too much detail because there is a video out that will pulls apart each section and highlights the keywords in it. But we have made a few updates to it. So when you are in the discussions, I do want to point out that there are two discussions in each week and they are graded separately. So you need to do everything for one and everything for the second question because they are graded separately. So justification of posts is um, what are you backing up your thoughts with? Is it scholarly literature? And we heard talk uh, from the librarian about how to get to scholarly literature. And it needs to be within five years. So we don't want studies from 1999. We want it from within five years. So each discussion, when you answer the question, when you answer the discussion question, you need to have at least one scholarly in-text citation and a matching reference that's within five years. Then as you answer the question, uh, this is called contributing to the learning community, the posts need to be relevant to the content and they need to be in your own words with minimal quotations. And we would like you to have a robust answer, so you need to have a minimum of 250 words. And the 80-20 rule applies, so you need to have 80% of your answer to the, to the discussion question in your own words. And then down here is netiquette, and this has to do with your replies to your classmates and or to your faculty member. And then down here is grammar and mechanics in APA format. And points are deducted depending on how many errors you have. And then participation and timeliness of posts. I wanted to describe this. You must post on two different days to get your five points because here in this box is everything you need to do. So post on two different days. You must answer the threaded discussion question. So the question needs to be answered on a day no later than Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. And then you need to reply to your classmates, to at least two classmates or a faculty member on a day no later than Sunday by 11.59 p.m. So in effect, there are essentially two deadlines for the, for the discussions. You have to answer the question by Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. And then your responses to your classmates or your faculty member need to be by Sunday at 11.59 p.m. And at some point, you have to be posting on different days. You can't post all on one day. You can't go in on Wednesday, answer the question, and reply to classmates, or you will lose five points. So that's all I want to say on that because there is a video out and it pulls apart each piece of the of the of the rubric and explains it more fully. 
Any questions? Okay. And I'm just going to point out here is week one. This is our course outline. And for people that like to see it in like a chart format, and it just shows what outcome it is, what our key concepts are, what our reading uh, assignments are, and what all we're going to be doing in that week. And you see week one is full of everything. Um, and then all the way down, it is the rest of the week. Before we lose um, any more time here, because we are running out of time, I want to go to the modules and point out a few important things. You should watch your student orientation module. Here's the Canvas orientation. Here are helpful Canvas student videos. Um, I'll just show you a few of these. You see there's a whole list of them. So if you're looking for something, uh, that's where you might find it. And how to work in Canvas. The course tools, there's always the question to the instructor forum. If you have a question, that's a good place to put it because then everyone can see it. Just realize that it's not a private question. If you have a private question, please uh, contact your faculty member through your Canvas uh, email. Here's APA template and an APA sample and training uh, PowerPoint. Here is Turnitin, which is a, um, this is a plagiarism detection software that the college has for you to use uh, so that you can submit it through there and that you can see and make uh, amends to anything that you need to change. It's, it's to help you. And then I wanna point out here is resources. And this just goes to the pages tab. And if we go to library resources, you would see the library, librarian's information. But I wanna to go to Canvas help. So I went to the resources and I went to library resources. I, I went to Canvas help. And then here is how to find and view your instructor feedback. This is a question on our quiz in week two, because we give a lot of feedback and we give it in your uh, discussions rubrics and we give it for your assignments. And we really spend a lot of time giving you feedback and we wanna make sure that you see it. So this is a this is very important link and you'll need to look at it to answer some of the questions on our quiz in week two that's on know your resources. So that's where you will find that. So I'm going to just go back. So all these resources are here for you. Canvas, helpful Canvas uh, videos, APA help, Turnitin help. And then this resources takes you to the pages tab. And there's a Canvas help there. And it, you can find how to see your feedback. So here's our modules, and you can see week one, week two, week three, week four, all the way to the end. And I'm just going to point out, always look at your checklist and objectives so you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Here's your reading assignment. Always read your reading assignment and your lectures before you go into your discussions, because this will give you thoughts and ideas about, about what the question's about. Here's our assignment. Uh, for who knew it, and here's the time management tracking chart. These two are two separate assignments. And then this practice quiz was for your, one of your discussions. And so that is all I have to say. I'm going to just check my notes real quick. Any questions on anything? Hi, I do have a question on one of the assignments. Yes. Um, I know you said we we're only supposed to watch like the videos and mm -hmm. then it'll tell you like if you complete it, if you have the full points. Well, I completed the videos and it sent me to like a little assignment next and I completed that as well. And then it told me I only had 32 out of 50. And you know, sometimes what happens is there's different settings and it defaults to, a, to the wrong setting. But if you've looked 
if you've watched all your assignment, if you've watched all the videos, your faculty member will give you the full 50 points. Okay. Do should I just email? Yeah. Uh, or, yes. or yeah, that would that would be fine. And and sometimes when the courses um, get set up, the who knew it's hiccup a little bit. I guess that's what I'd call it. They hiccup and and so it's a, a setting that just went wrong. And so that um, we've gone through and we've checked everything again. And so that shouldn't happen again. But go back and check your grade book and your faculty member may have already given you the 50 points for that. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. Any other questions? Do the faculty members have anything that you think I missed? No, I think it was very thorough. Um, yeah. yeah, it was. And I just want to uh, the, um, say something about the reading and lecture. Before you, like uh, Dr. Ann was saying, that before you go uh, looking for other uh, resources, read the, the read the reading assignments and the lecture before you go to the discussion or if you have any assignment because all the resources you have in your reading and your lecture this is for all the students who emailed me too they were asking about resources there is a lot of resources scholarly and there is a lot of information in the discussion and another thing you can't post any discussion earlier than uh, sunday of the uh, week Thank before you. So you can't post, like uh, for now, post for week two. You can't do that because it's the same like you are posting late. This is very important note. Yes, so, yeah. I'd, I'd like to echo that too. So like you, you can see the questions ahead of time because they're, they're in there, but don't post bef before that week starts because in, in the week starts on a Sunday is what Dr. Jabbar was saying and you can't get ahead it's like walking into an empty classroom and you're on the wrong day you're a day early so it won't count so you don't want to you don't want to just go in and do it all okay so we go week by week yeah you can you can write the uh, the, the document if you have some thoughts on a word document and save it for the next week that's fine totally fine but you can't just post it you can do that as uh, Dr. Wilkinson was saying. Yeah. So. Good, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you brought that up. Anything else? Um, I, this is Dr. Mady. Um, I don't think so, I think it was very thorough. Um, I would just say again that uh, we are all approachable and so please reach out to your faculty earlier than later if you have any questions about what is uh, expected of you. Um, we can't help you if we don't know what's going on. So, um. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, there's another thing about the, the due dates. We are, as instructors, as you teachers, you can, educators, we can't control, for example, the Hanuwit, we can't control it. We can't control the due date. So we have to take the permission in order to give you the permission to redo the test or remediation or give you the late uh, extension, for example, or do anything. So it's a policy. So we have to follow the policy. Uh, so please go to the, your uh, student handbook, read about the policy, just to orient yourself. So if you, as, um, um, as we're saying, if you don't know the, about the policies, you will do a lot of mistakes and we can't help you. So if you are late, you are late, even if it's like five minutes. I, I received a lot of like, um, I've been receiving a lot of um, emails from uh, students from um, other classes. I'm, I'm late just five minutes. I'm late just 15 minutes. This is, you are late. So 10% will be deducted from your assignment. So, and we can't help you in that. Sorry. 
No, that that's right. And and you know, we we are held to rules just like you're held to rules. And so just like Dr. Jabbar was saying, is that you know, if it's two minutes late on it's two minutes late, the gray book likes up red and it's and it's there and we're held to rules and you're held to rules. So you need to know your policies and that way you'll avoid losing 10% um, of, your, of your grade. So be sure to know your policies and be sure to know the late policy. Well, if that's it, I would just like to thank everyone um, for coming because uh, this was a great time to to go over things and to make sure we're all on the same page. And I hope you got new ideas from the librarian. And thank you so much for coming. We're excited for this next eight weeks and uh, we're gonna learn a lot in that time. So thank you for joining us. So Anne, Donna, Raina. Yes. I've taken attendance, so I will send the attendance uh, along with the recording of the Zoom meeting uh, as soon as I can upload it into you to YouTube and send it your way. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Should I stop sharing?